Hi guys! I am making this video on a complete whim. Um, if you don't know what the YouTube, what's it called, the YouTube Pagan Challenge or whatever it is, if you don't know what this is, it's um, a list of questions that Anna Kagaris put together and posted on the YouTube Pagans Facebook group as a sort of challenge for everyone um, in that group to do if they want to and to post weekly videos throughout the year on their channel so that everybody is kind of answering the same questions every week and that there's a bit of a sort of community dialogue going on. And I am a member of that group but I've also just been loving how other people in the, the YouTube community who aren't actually on that Facebook group are also chiming in because they're watching people you know on YouTube um, all posting these videos and they're kind of getting on board too and I just thought you know, why not? Um, <laughs> I am going to make an update update video um, after this, which I'll, I'll probably post kind of around the same time. So um, I won't waste any time in this video kind of talking to you about what's been going on with me or doing my usual kind of, sorry for not being around guys, sorry for not making any videos. Um, so I'll just get straight into it. Um, this is a bit ambitious of me, uh, considering that I have been posting very few videos so far since I started the Masters, but you know, we'll just see how it goes. I probably won't be posting every week, but I'd like to try. <laughs> I'm certainly going to do this first one anyway, and then we'll we'll see. So the question for week one, and we're in week two now, but I will hopefully make that video at some point today if I get the time as well, or maybe tomorrow. Um, so the question for week one was about how you found your path, basically. Um, how did you find your pagan path? How did you become a pagan? or what have you. I have kind of talked about this a little bit in the first couple of introductory videos I made on the channel, like the very first two videos that I made, particularly the first one, but um, when I kind of thought about what I'd said in that video, I didn't really re-watch it because it was the first video I ever made and it's it makes me cringe to watch. Um, but I don't think I actually went into the nitty gritty of how I kind of discovered paganism as a thing in any great detail actually. I think I spent more time talking about my Catholic upbringing to be honest. So yeah, maybe this video will be an opportunity for me to talk about it from a slightly different angle that I kind of haven't talked about before. So I basically discovered paganism because a girl who I was kind of friendly with, we were sort of frenemies. I mean, I kind of hate that term, but it's the most accurate description of what we were. Um, she, I actually ended up buying her a tarot deck for Christmas because she wanted one and she made it known that she wanted one and we did a Chris Kindle between our little group and I got her and uh, I knew that she wanted me to buy her, whoever got her in the Chris Kindle to buy her ta a tarot deck. So that was the first time I bought a tarot deck and it wasn't for me, it was actually for her. I believe I bought her the Rider Waite. Um, and then after that, she was talking a bit about casting spells and witchcraft and things like that. And she was talking about a love spell that she was gonna like cast on this guy and at the time, I just wasn't even aware that witchcraft was, that anybody actually thought the witchcraft was a real thing. Like, I didn't think there were actually people out there casting spells in the, in, in the real world. Like, this was not something that I was actually aware of somehow. I'm not sure how I missed it because I was, I was very aware of the, a, lot of, a lot of popular culture. I was um, very aware of Charmed. I'd watched Charmed. Um, I think I may have even... Had I even seen The Craft at that point? Maybe I hadn't seen The Craft at that point yet, um, but I definitely had watched Charmed and I'd come across the term Wicca, but um, this was kind of, not pre-internet, but it was in the early days of internet when I didn't have my own computer and going home and kind of Googling like, what is Wicca? It just wouldn't have occurred to me. And like I say, I just thought it was fiction. Anytime I came across this stuff about Wicca and witchcraft, like um, in popular culture, I just assumed it was pure fiction. I didn't think there were actual real people out there doing this. So I became completely enthralled with this idea that there were actually people out there who, who worked magic, who were witches, who considered themselves to be witches and who did witchcraft. So I basically just sort of started um, trying to do a very, um, I, I would have been about 13 or 14, maybe 14, I was like doing a very kind of vague sort of research. Um, so I think I pretty much just went home and Googled like witchcraft or magic or something. And one of the first page, one of the first websites I came across was Witchvox. And Witchvox was basically my introduction to witchcraft and paganism, which, you know, was, could have been a hell of a lot worse. Like that was actually a great, a great resource to stumble on. Um, I also came across a lot of those sort of like old style um, Yahoo, web pages, you remember those kind of web pages that people could build? I don't know if it was, 
I can't remember the name of the website that you could kind of build them with, but it was it was under the, the Yahoo kind of brand, I think. Um, there were a lot of those kind of pages going around and people would like talk about their craft and post pictures of their altars. So I started kind of finding information. People tended to post a lot of secondhand information um, on those kind of websites as well. So I was coming across a lot of stuff. I was copying a lot of content from these web pages and pasting them into Word documents, but I didn't know where any of this stuff was coming from because I didn't have access to books and because my library wouldn't have had anything. And I was terrified of being found out at this point. And I'm not sure if I thought that my parents would disapprove. As it happened, my, my dad did actually disapprove. Or if I was just generally embarrassed at the idea that somebody would turn around and say, oh, that's ridiculous. That's not a real thing. What are you doing? I'm not exactly sure why I was so terrified, but in the way that only a 14 year old girl can be, I was absolutely petrified of being sort of found out. So I definitely was like not going into libraries and bar borrowing books. Um, most of the, the kind of information, the first information I got was from these websites. So, you know, it was pretty dubious, but I like, kind of was gradually getting an idea that witchcraft was actually, not only were there a lot of people out there who thought that witchcraft really was a thing and that they were practicing witchcraft and working magic, but that also that it was, for some people and a lot of people, a religion, and that paganism was a thing. <laughs> so essentially I came across paganism through witchcraft and magic because I grew up reading Harry Potter and you know, absolutely loved the concept of working magic, of having magical powers or abilities. And I was just completely, completely enthralled and bewitched by this idea that, you know, maybe, maybe magic is real in some way. Um, and then the, the paganism kind of came out of that. So I think the, the, the most formative material for me that I found online was on Witchbox. It was this series called, I think it was called like Witchcraft 101 or Paganism 101, something like that. Um, so You Want to Be a Witch, I think was the, the name of the first like four part um, blog series. And they were fairly long in depth blog posts. And the first one I think was called So You Want to Be a Witch. And it just kind of walks you through um, what you might need to do and learn about and read in order to become a witch, in order to learn more about witchcraft and paganism and um, to explore this path and to figure out if, it, if it's for you. And that was really invaluable for me. I did then go and buy some books eventually, um, very stealthily, and <laughs> um, picked up some pretty strange books because <clears throat> I was pretty much just walking into bookshops and just picking up one of the first things I would see off the shelf. I didn't know what I was looking at or what I was looking for um, and just kind of buying them and, and reading them and they were not great. The first couple of books I bought were basically terrible. I mean, I didn't even, even if I picked up Silver Ravenwolf, I think I would have at least gotten a better grasp on what witchcraft and Wicca was supposed to be about. I wasn't even managing to pick things up that were that helpful. <laughs> So that gives you an idea of what the first resources were that I was kind of picking up. Like they were, they were pretty poor. Like it was quite a, mi a mixture of um, books that kind of were Wicca and were talking about Wicca and then books that um, were just kind of talking about like candle burning rituals with one of the books. Um, so it wasn't really talking about it as a, as a religion. It was more talking just about how to do spells and that kind of stuff just never really I very quickly became less interested in the concept of just casting spells because I was getting really fascinated by this sort of mystery religion aspect of it. Um, but because it was Ireland um, and because I just didn't really have access to that much kind of information, I didn't, I was too afraid to go along to groups. I was quite young. There weren't a lot of groups available anyway. Any of them that were available were only happening in pubs. Um, so I didn't really... At that point, if I had been older, maybe I would have approached a real life coven and gone a sort of traditional Wiccan route. Um, I probably would have loved to do that, but that would have required my parents having too much um, idea of what I was up to and, and really it wasn't going to work for me um, in Dublin at that age. Um, so basically it just kind of continued from there in a very ad hoc kind of way. I just kept buying more books and building up my repertoire of what I knew about and what I thought I wanted my practice to be. I don't have the really, really early books with me here in Edinburgh, like the first three books that I bought. Um, I don't have them here with me. Um, the earliest book, like the book that I've had the longest that I have here was this one. Um, I didn't even pick up um, like the original Wicca, uh, which I have here. I didn't even pick up this one for a couple of years. 
um, because it just wasn't there in the shop that I was, you know, shopping in. The one pagan shop, the one new age witchy shop in Dublin at that time. And this was the only one, like this, I just found this on the shelf again. I didn't know who Cunningham was. I didn't know what I was looking for. Oh no, I lied. No, I did actually have an idea who Cunningham was because Witchbox actually had this handy kind of list of books, which were the most popular books um, that people um, would recommend or that they liked or they voted for or something um, for different, different age groups. So I did have an idea of what I was looking for, but I could just never find them. Any bookshops that I went into and asked about them, they were like, we don't have them. <laughs> were kind of, you know, glaring at me, um, which was fun. And then in the witchy shop, they had a very limited range of books. So this was the first one that I found that actually had like a, a familiar author's name on it. Um, I was actually looking for Silver Ravenwolf, but I, I never found I never found any of her work, I don't think, any of her books anywhere, um, which, you know, was probably lucky. Um, and I really wanted um, Starhawk, but I never came across Starhawk at that point either. And I really, really, really wish now that I had picked up a copy of Starhawk of the Spiral Dance when I was 14, because I think that would have had a huge impact on me. And I think it might have meant that I actually maintained my practice a lot more and that I mightn't have actually had the big hiatus that I had from the ages of kind of 19 to 22, 18 really, 17, 18 to 22 or so. Um, but yeah, so this is like, this is the oldest book, the oldest pagan book that I have sitting on my shelf. Um, it, we go back a long way. It's been, it's been about 13 years. <laughs> so yeah, I think that gives you an idea of um, what my grassroots were. Um, you know, I was just, it was, it was a very slow and gradual process because I didn't have access to a lot of good resources and it took me a long time to figure out what was going on. It took me a long time to figure out what Wicca really was and what the whole thing was all about, really. Uh, by the time I kind of started losing interest in paganism about when I went to university, um, that was really only, you know, it had taken me that long. It had taken me three to three years maybe to kind of even figure out the basics um, to kind of because it was just such a strange way to go about finding out the information because it was so uh, PC it was kind of bitty um, and I think my problem was that I felt like it wasn't genuine I discovered Ronald Hutton and I didn't buy the book initially but I read enough online um, about his research and about the the whole idea of witchcraft not being um, necessarily a, a pre-christian kind of there, there not being any continuity from a pre-christian religion necessarily um, and I think that kind of put me off a bit and I think when I came to the decision that magic didn't work um, not in the way that maybe I wanted it to or not not in the way that I wanted to prove to myself that it did I kind of lost interest um, and it was kind of it took a while a long while then for me to accept that I could actually be religious or spiritual without believing in any of the things that I was at that point, at that early age, trying to figure out if I believed in or not, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'll leave it there. Um, and hopefully I will get more of these videos made because they're a lot of fun. And I hope you enjoyed that. And um, if you have a channel, even if you don't, um, definitely consider getting on board with this challenge um, and you know maybe make a video, video response and um, join in the fun.